Hello everyone and welcome back to the Maker's Workbench. I'm your host Charles and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a headless version of Raspberry Pi OS for standard Raspberry Pi SBCs as well as the Pi Zero variant. Last year, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced Raspberry Pi Imager, a utility designed to simplify the process of installing operating systems onto SD cards for use in Raspberry Pi SBCs. Raspberry Pi Imager allows users to select the specific operating system they would like to install and then the program downloads the latest version of that operating system in the background before the install begins. Now that we know how that works, let's move on. Head over to raspberrypi.org slash software and download the correct version of Raspberry Pi Imager for the type of computer you'll be using to install the Raspberry Pi OS onto the SD card with. There are versions for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even a version for Raspberry Pi OS itself. Additionally, you'll need a Class 10 UHS-1 micro SD card that is 8GB or larger and some way to read it with your computer, such as Kingston's FCR HS4. I have linked to it in the description below and I've used this card reader daily for over three years now and it's never let me down. Okay, now let's get started. With Raspberry Pi Imager downloaded, install it as you would any other program. Then insert the SD card into the reader and open Raspberry Pi Imager. When Raspberry Pi Imager opens, you're presented with two options, Choose OS and Choose SD Card. Click on Choose OS and scroll down the list and select the Erase option. Then click on the Choose SD Card button and select the SD card you just inserted. Once you have made your selection, click the right button. Please note that this will completely erase the SD card and format it to the FAT32 file system, so make sure you choose the right SD card and ensure that there is nothing on it you wish to keep before clicking right. When the formatting process is completed, you can now choose the operating system you would like to install. For the purpose of this tutorial, I am installing Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit, a headless version of Raspberry Pi OS. Now, once again, select the SD card, and then you'll need to click the right button one final time to begin the burning process. This process can take anywhere from a few minutes to upwards of half an hour, depending on the SD card's write speed. Once this process is completed, a prompt appears telling you that the image has been installed, and you'll need to once again remove and reinsert the SD card to make it available. Since this is the headless version of Raspberry Pi OS, there is no desktop environment in which to set up things like SSH and Wi-Fi, so we need to do that before we insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. SSH is disabled by default for security reasons, and to enable it we simply need to create a blank file called SSH and drop it into the boot partition of the SD card. To do this, open Notepad or the equivalent that's available on your computer's operating system. Don't type anything and simply save the file with the file name of SSH. If the program you're using adds extensions to the end of the file name, such as .txt, you'll need to open the boot partition, locate the ssh.txt file, and delete the extension at the end. You may get a warning that says something about the file becoming unusable, but ignore this and just continue. With SSH configured, we can move on to getting Wi-Fi set up. Visit raspberrypi.org slash documentation slash configuration slash wireless slash headless.md don't worry if you missed that, there's a link to it in the description below. Now scroll down until you see this bit of code. Highlight this block of code and copy it to your clipboard. Now open another blank notepad and paste the code you just copied. Next you will need to enter your Wi-Fi's SSID in this field and then your Wi-Fi password in the following field. Now go back to the raspberrypi.org page we have open and copy the file name you see here. Go back to the notepad document and save the document as WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. Now to verify that everything's right, open the boot partition, scroll to the bottom and ensure that the SSH file and the WPA underscore supplicant dot comp file are there. If both files are there and you follow these instructions correctly, you can insert an SD card into the Raspberry Pi, power it up, and after a few minutes you should be able to SSH in and begin the configuration process. If you're unsure of how to SSH into your Raspberry Pi, I have a video which I've linked to in the description below that walks you through the entire process. One final note, to gain access to the full amount of storage on the SD card, you'll need to expand the file system after booting your Pi for the first time. To do this, in the terminal type sudo space raspy hyphen config. That's R-A-S-P-I hyphen config. 
When the Raspi config menu loads, navigate down to the Advanced section and then select Expand File System. When this process completes, you can exit out a Raspi config and then you'll be prompted to reboot the Raspberry Pi. Once the Pi reboots, you can log back in via SSH and continue on with what you need to do. Before this video ends, I just want to ask that you give this video a thumbs up if you found this tutorial helpful in any way and that you consider subscribing to the channel as well as ringing the notification bell so that you get notified when I post new content or start a live stream. Only 8% of you who watch this video are subscribed and even less are receiving notifications when I post new content. I'm really pushing hard to grow this channel in 2021 and I'm doing this full time, at least for the time being. So knowing that you enjoy the content really helps motivate me to create new videos. And that's going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my content and as always, hack the world and make awesome.